AIN3 is a technical term that describes some cell changes that take place in certain parts of the body, mainly in the area of the human body called the perineum. So in, in men and women, that is near the bottom area, near, near the, uh, the, the vulvar vaginal area in ladies. And this cell change uh, is really a precancerous change. Um, and we believe that it happens because of the body's ability, inability rather, to, to tackle a very common virus called human papillomavirus or HPV. And as a result of that, these cell changes occur, which you can see under a microscope if you look very carefully. The cause of AIN3 uh, and other cell changes, these precancerous cell changes, we believe is the human papilloma virus or HPV virus. So this is a very common virus that most of us are exposed to uh, in our teenage years. Uh, and there are hundreds of strains of this virus that circulate around human populations. And in fact, uh, many of you may already know that there is a vaccine that uh, has been produced to, against the most common strains that initially uh, girls got in their teenage years. And it's being rolled out more widely now. Um, and, and this virus uh, causes about 10% of the world's cancers, which include uh, cancers in the perineum, uh, which, uh, which is the area that I'm interested in, or, or head and neck cancers, for example, and cervical cancer. So it's a very um, nasty virus uh, in certain individuals who don't have the ability to, to combat it very well. AIN3 does not always progress to cancer. Although we do know that there are some high risk groups. So certain individuals with problems with their immunity, for example, either because of an organ transplant or drugs that are given to, um, to reduce the power of the immune system, or indeed uh, conditions that affect immunity such as HIV. Uh, so those individuals have greater difficulty in combating the cell changes that arise, and we would classify them as being in high-risk groups. So the, in the average population, the general population, the risk is, is pretty small. Uh, but if you are in one of those high-risk groups, then uh, it is important to, uh, to, to raise any problems that arise in the bottom area in particular to your general practitioner or a specialist and be checked over thoroughly early. So AIN3 uh, is, is treated principally by two, uh, three methods, I would say. So firstly, um, there are certain creams that you can apply in certain parts of the body. Uh, there's a cream called Aldara, which, uh, which if applied for a three or four month period, you can uh, uh, reduce or the severity of AIN3. There are what we call ablative techniques where we use our, uh, devices such as the laser device or electrical devices, heat probes to burn away small areas of AIN3. And finally, there are uh, surgical methods where you can surgically cut away small areas. So it can be treated um, but it is a specialist area where you need a thorough assessment to decide what the best way forward is and a thorough discussion with your specialist in advance to decide which of those methods is best. The difference between AIN3 and the other grades, which are essentially AIN1 or 2, is that it is the more severe end of the uh, spectrum. AIN2 and AIN3, we classify as high-grade disease, and AIN1 typically as low-grade disease. And so 2 and 3 can be used interchangeably. But essentially what 3 and 2 signify is the presence of a more a higher grade of disease, which needs more attention, whereas the lower grades uh, can be managed 
without much concern, particularly about progression to, to cancer. 